Yeah. The first rap group to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame goes by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. The man that created the DJ technique called the Quick Mix Theory goes by the name of Grandmaster Flash. The man who received the Lifetime Achievement Award for the Global Spin Awards goes by the name of Grandmaster Flash. The Grammy Hall of Fame for the song The Message with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Urban Music Awards, Lifetime Achievement Award, Grandmaster Flash. BETIM Hip Hop Icon Award, Grandmaster Flash. Mm. Honorary Doctor's Degree at Buffalo State College, Grandmaster Flash. Damn. Awarded Sweden's Polar Prize, which is like the Nobel Peace Prize. Woo. Grandmaster Flash and the Grammy's Lifetime Achievement Award and nominee special for message, Grandmaster Flash. The man, the architect, if it wasn't for him and a few others, not a whole lot, there will not be this culture as we know it and understand it to be. This company and its platforms have been built on DJs. They all come from his lineage. This man has embraced technology throughout his entire career, which has helped to expand and push our culture forward. I want to welcome him to the show. We've been trying to do this for a couple of years. I am s tremendously honored and humbled to have him in this studio today. Citizens, I'm going to open up the phone lines to speak to a legend, an architect, and the man has just reached halftime. He's nowhere near done. He got his own podcast that he's about to create. He's about to. He's on Twitch on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. He's doing a whole lot. He won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Give it up for the one and only, the legendary, iconic Grandmaster Flash hey. is in the building. Hey. Come on, Flash. Oh man, thank you, brother. This is the pleasure, man. Last thank time you. I see you, we was at a wedding with the family. We was at a wedding. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I bumped into Flash, man. Have a seat, man. That's your throne, man. Only well, <laughs> before I bump into the seat, man. Okay. I, there's something I want to explain oh, to okay, you. Okay, okay, cool. You Here, know, get this mic you know, here. it's something right. I want to, I want to do here because there's so many people on the planet are wondering, well, how did this thing actually happen? So I'm going to give you guys a math and science computation on how I came up with the backbeat for the human being to speak on. Because, you know, a lot of times when you ask a particular person about a rap song, they talk about the subject matter, okay. who's dope, who's not, where he's from, this and that. But in the recording process, it's the music first. I come from a time where there's no internet, no social media, no apps, mm. no studios, no computers, just double copies of each song. In my teenage years, I didn't do what normal teenagers do, going to the park, playing basketball, uh, sneaking to smoke cigarettes, thinking you're grown, uh, having a drink of an alcoholic beverage, I was angry about something. I was kind of unhappy with the way songs were produced. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem was this. Songs are designed, it's the intro, then it's the verse, then it's the singing, and then the drummer gets five or 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's pissed me off and I was saying to myself, when a song is played, I noticed as a youngster that when the drum solo came, the heinies would move, gyrate more. So why isn't that the biggest part of the record? I just <laughs> could not understand that. I said heinies. So, I know I can say the other thing, but. No, but uh, right. I like it, go ahead. So I came up with this science and math called the quick mix theory. Okay. That's good. I've done this for only lectures for the biggest companies on the planet. For Sway, 
I'm going to do this for you. Thank I'm you. I'm going to write it out. And this is the reason why the rapper had a bed of music to speak on. Okay. Mm. It's Grandmaster Flash here. I'm opening up the phone lines. He's actually got an easel right here. And wow. he's about to paint out like a college professor. He's writing out a theory on how he came back with the quick mix theory, which led to many people learning how to cut and scratch records. Mm-hmm. All right? and This so, is no longer a studio, citizens. This is a lecture this hall. This is a lecture hall. Now, this is where it all began for hip-hop, for the culture. The DJ was the cornerstone of the culture always. Mm-hmm. The business start to expand, and then you start seeing the MC come out front because they're easier to market. Um uh, but really, the DJ was at the cornerstone of all this culture. I'm going to open up the phone lines, too, 888-742-3345. And Flash is writing out an equation right now. Rich Nice is here with us. Rich! Rich Nice, first rapper ever signed to Motown Records. Great day to be alive. And from the Bronx. Did you know that? Come on. <laughs> and from the Bronx. Very and from blessed. the Bronx. Very blessed to be able to have seen Grandmaster Flash DJ before record. So you went to a Flash party before? At the T-Connection. Ooh. The At T the T Connection. Yes, which was a hip-hop club on Gun Hill Road in the Bronx mm-hmm. back in the days. And if you got to see Flash at the T Connection, you was blessed because most people just got the tape. Wow. So Rich was there. Show off, Rich. Rich was there. Ah. Okay, so Flash is literally writing on a... Um, an easel right now and it looked like a calculus equation uh-huh we didn't know hip-hop was this smart <laughs> <laughs> but lo and behold yes indeed well and, you know he's bit um in his high school days at gompers he was able to learn um electronics and so i ran into him at the grammys in la and i asked him how come he doesn't talk more about the 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 creations that he's made with these electronics and taking things apart mm-hmm. and he promised me that he would so, so maybe we'll talk about that today. Right exactly. now, he's literally drawing out these equations, um, which I can't wait to hear him explain. Right. We need that broken down. Yes, yes. And yes. figures, facts and figures. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, okay, Flash, just turn it around to the mic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Get a close-up on that too, Drew. This is the pillars of what hip-hop stands on. When I first came up with this, this was in service of the stars of the day, which was the break dancers. During these early part of the 70s, the rapper wasn't born yet. Right. Okay. Take now, those. Mm-hmm. take that in. During the early part of the 70s, the rapper wasn't born right. yet. Right. This okay. was for the break dancers. Okay. The stars of the days was, like I said, the break dancers and the graffiti artists. Mm-hmm. So, in my early years, I attempted to be a great break dancer, not good at it. <laughs> and I attempted to, do, to, to be a graffiti artist, not good at that. Um, actually, I was a, a decent graffiti artist until I got 18. Uh-huh. And that's when you could go to jail for a long time for writing on things you're not supposed to be writing what on. What was your name? What was your group? It was Flash One. Flash One. That's what it was. That's what it was. So that's now, hard. the brain comprehends a song statistically in four bars. Let's take good times. One, do, do, a two, mm, 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 three, mm, mm, four, mm, 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 mm. So now, this is what I base my theory on. Four bars with the vinyl moving clockwise Six counterclockwise revolutions is a re-return to the top of the break, break, which made the tone arm useless. Break that down. So, I tried to figure out how could I unify pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, Latin. So what I would do is during my early shopping years of vinyl, is I would look for that little teeny tiny drum break. Mm. And I based this, I said, no colors, no genre, no age, no location. I grew up listening to all different types of music. So when I went record shopping, I went in all these areas of the record shop trying to find those records that had that teeny tiny drum break. 
Once I figured out that, I went to my turntables and I ran into lots of problems. Okay. The cartridge comes in two classifications, magnetic and ceramic. Mm. The needles comes in two classifications, conical and elliptical. <laughs> I had to figure out which one of the, of the needles would stay in the groove while I went counterclockwise to re-arrive to the top of the break. This was paramount. The elliptical needle, although it did sound much better, did not stay inside of the groove. It was more like a, a backwards J. So when I would try to pull it back, it kept slipping out of the groove. The conical needle, although shaped like a nail, stayed inside of the groove. I was able to go counterclockwise. Problem number one was this. Okay, that's the when you get turntables, you get this nasty <laughs> rubber. Rubber mat. Rubber mat. And the problem was... When I tried to go counterclockwise, this was causing a lot of resistance. Out with that. Just threw it away like that. Threw he just threw the, he threw the rubber mat out for those who's tuned in. Okay. Mom was a seamstress. She's been going a long time. Miss you, Mom. So I was lucky to touch polyester, silk, rayon, cotton, Leather, suede. So when I threw away the rubber mat, I said to myself, I need to buffer between the vinyl and the platter. And the key thing to the platter was it had to be able to go clockwise comfortably while I went counterclockwise. And I can remember grabbing a record and run into the nearest material store. Wow. And I was going through all the aisles, rayon, silk, polyester, cotton, suede, leather, felt. Felt. The problem with felt was, but it felt right. The problem with felt is it's limp. And I can remember in grade school we used to use it cut out letters and mm -hmm. right. and if you and if you if you made it all clear you get five stars and mom, you bring it home to mom mom would be really proud of you. I said to myself, this is this feels like the right material, but then somehow or another I had to make this stiff. So when mom wasn't looking, I went into the <laughs> kitchen cabinet and I got spray starch. Spray starch. And I sprayed it on both sides of hold it, Rich. The hold, felt. It, hold the felt for him. Demonstrate. So you Yo. like you knew to spray both sides. I sprayed <laughs> both sides, uh -huh. and mm. that felt that was limp became this. This is crazy. Problem number one solved. But the problem of it was when I put the Wafer, and that's what I called it at the time. I called it a wafer. It's because it was stiff. And mom used to dress us up for Easter, and we used to go to church, and we would get on that line, and, and, and the pastor would pass out these white things <laughs> called a wafer. So I called it a wafer. That was part, that was part the problem solved. The second part was when I put the, the wafer on the steel platter and then put the album on the wafer and I tried to spin it back, I still felt resistance. So I can remember whenever I bought home great grades, mom would bake chocolate chip cookies on this wax paper. Wax paper. Wow, the ingenuity is, who, what's going on? So I decided to put the wax paper on the platter, put the wafer on the wax paper, and put the vinyl on top of both, turned the platter on, and I got no resistance. Mm. First, the needles was the first problem. Second problem, 
What's the way? Soft. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, third problem was when I was playing in dark places, I had to be able to see this little minuscule break in dark, smoky pl- places. And this is, I'm a little emotional about this because when I did this next thing I'm going to show you, Every kind of soon a vinyl and everybody that was DJing was extremely, extremely angry at me because I would take crayon uh-huh. and I would mark the area where the drum break was. The circular mark mark was the neighborhood. The intersector part was where the break started and where it ended. So when I was putting crayon marks on the vinyl, the whole DJ world, the whole <laughs> vinyl connoisseur world was really fucking mad at me. Why? But it was, it was the only way I was able to control time okay. and create this thing where DJs now became musicians sway. So, you know, a lot of people talk about the the lyric and the, the the who's dope and who's not who's this who's that but nobody ever said wait a minute if there were no internet no social media no app no studios no nothing where did the beat come from how was it manufactured here my final problem was this as I stated earlier. Four bars forward, the brain captures what the groove is doing. The one major part that made me almost walk away from this was this, Sway. Why is it, if it's four bars while the vinyl is moving in a clockwards position, and why is it that when I go backwards, Four times, uh, why am I not at the the arrival of the drum break? And I remember walking away for about a month and a half. And a reason why, the reason why I could not re-arrive to the top of the break is because the speed of a vinyl is 33 and a third. Uh, once I compensated for the third. Wow. So now when four bars goes forward, I know for a fact I have to come back. And the reason why I marked the the, the vinyl with the intersecting markers, I would watch how many times it passed. The tone arm would tell me when I'm back at the top. Uh-huh of the break. So while the rapper is in the front just telling his story vocally, I could keep a steady beat going. Prior to this, rappers did not exist. It was a thing where I just put a microphone on the side of the table, Mm -hmm. and I said to anybody in the park, can you verbalize to this? Mm. Many people failed. And it was just one, (laughs) one gentleman. (laughs) <laughs> who had this nursery rhyme type of style. And we met briefly. And then when I went to go visit my girlfriend, he was there. Ooh. He was dating the older sister. I was dating a younger one. So we met again. Wow. <laughs> Next time I played in the park, I asked him to try. And this is where the rapper was born. His name was Keith Wiggins, known as Cowboy. Cowboy, Cowboy. wow. The right. real McCoy. Yeah. So now, wow. I would ask Keith, like, you know, I go to different blocks, you know, I do these block parties, do you want to get down with me? And he's like, sure. The rest of the five is history, but I just want to just say, like, Thank you for this way. Yes. It's like I know we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. But th- hip hop is 50 years old. And do you know, out of all the interviews I've been listening to and all the people doing television interviews, nobody's talking about where this started. Yeah. Nobody's talking about the DJs. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking about the incredible producers uh-huh. who put these songs together. Because I'm telling you, I'll put my life on this that any one of you rappers. 
could have not wrote them dope ass rhymes on them sample based tracks early on mm-hmm. if you wasn't inspired by the track that the producer made. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Premier, Pete Rock, and the Come Bomb on. Squad, and Just Blaze, Molly Mar, RZA, KG, Easy Mo B, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Kanye West, Jay Dilla, Swiss Beast, Dr. Dre, DJ Muggs, <laughs> DJ Battlecat, DJ Aladdin, DJ Toop, Jermaine Dupree, Polo the Don. <laughs> I mean, just to name a few, I could go here for years yes, and years and years. shout out to the producers. The mm-hmm. producers. Yes. They made it all possible, the ones who put this together. So this thing here that I was doing manually sway, uh-huh. there's this machine called the sampler. When that was born, so now you could take a piece of information, record it onto a disc, plug it into the computer, and tell the computer to lock this, lock this Four bars over and over and over again. And this became from little business in the park yes. to big business today. Yeah. So I want to just shout out all the people who made the beat, the producers, because you rappers, and I'm going to say this, a lot of the dope-ass rappers would probably could not figure out how the song was put together. Because they're an expert in their area. Yes. But if I were to ask any one of the incredible rappers, how was that beat made? Because they come in after when it's mm-hmm. done. They come in the studio, they say what they got to say, and they leave. Mm-hmm. They don't mix, they don't master. They don't mix, they don't master, they do none of those things. Yeah. So I, I, I find it critically important to people to understand the fourth element, the last element, which is the rapper, would not exist if it wasn't for the producer, if it wasn't for the beat maker, if it wasn't for this quick mix theory. Grandmaster Flash Woo! is here, man. I love it. Thank you, man. Give that man a round of applause. Wow. For That's even in putting it in this form. I'm going to play a song. Cowboy was your first rapper? Yeah, he was. Wow, man. He was my first. He was That, that, that was my baby. And when he passed, it's kind of like the whole thing just... Kind of pass, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys the quick mix theory on the turntables after we talk, so that you can understand that understand why the sample based tracks coming out in the '80s was so incredible. It's because of this. Some of the things that were sampled or that I played were the best musicians on the mm. planet. So the quick mix theory has two numbers: the four and the six. Six plus four is what? Ten. Ten. So them rappers was handing a track that was on ten. All they had to do was just spit properly. There it mm. is. Yo, Grandmaster Flash is here, man. What's the first song y'all ever made? Oh, uh, Super Rapping. Let's hear it. 888-742-3345. <laughs> That's a 79? Yeah, 1979, so Grandmaster Flash, The Furious Five. This is the recipient of the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. This man is the architect of this culture. Wow. Tracy G, when I say architect, I mean there weren't any blueprints. No, this is a pioneer. There wasn't a guideline. There wasn't anyone experienced who had done what he created Mm -hmm. and put it in an equation of how it all started. The DJ was the cornerstone of all of this. There would be no rapper. We wouldn't be celebrating the LLs if it wasn't for the DJs. Yeah. By the way, LL is the GOAT. I just want to throw that in there just for the record. Indeed, indeed. Just for the record. Can't go wrong saying that. And now we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop. We got the one and only Grandmaster Flash. When I think of hip-hop in its beginnings and my early stages learning about it, I think of four names. Grandmaster Flash. I think of Africa Bambada. I think of DST. And I think a cool Herc. Mm-hmm. Those are the immediate names that come to mind. Respect. Right? Um, is there a possibility that we're going to see those four names come together before this year is out? Let me ask you that question. Um, I said in a, uh, a video that if the four of us can get together on a summer day, on a bench, throwing nuts to the pigeons with a camera on us would be the greatest story ever 
told they had the four of us just sitting there talking about our moms our dads our sisters how we were truly influenced from the very very beginning i hope before i leave this planet that this could possibly happen damn man shit mm. i just threw that out there i didn't think he was gonna yeah. respond like that man That's, yeah. we can make that happen flash i, I feel rich nice and i talk to herc all the time yeah. so i would love to sit and chop up stories he's got a sister that was in this corner just like mine yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so i would love it i'd love it when you look at now where hip-hop is 50 years later um you know what are your thoughts how do you is did it happen the way is is it moving in the direction you would have hoped it moved in absolutely okay because see what you got to understand sway anything that is as magical as this thing was in the bronx when it leaves the bronx and it goes to philly it's gonna tweak uh -huh. when it goes to Atlanta it's going to tweak when it goes to California it's going to tweak when it goes to Germany it's going to tweak when it goes to Australia it's going to tweak that's the only way this thing could have growth that's when everybody else could put their spin on it lyrically and musically it has to it's the only way this thing would have grown or we wouldn't be sitting here celebrating yeah. something that has touched uh -huh. so many people on this blue marble called earth uh -huh. you know so for me Never in my wildest dreams that me doing this uh -huh. would have touched so many people. When I go and I tour and I see people doing this and I see a person in front speaking, I'm like, whoa. And believe it or not, my pops, my pops, God bless the dead, he's been going a long time. As a little boy, I used to, like, against all house rules, uh -huh. <laughs> touch his shit. Yeah. And Pop <laughs> yep. used to fry the hiney. <laughs> fry. And when he would go to work, I'd go back in and he'd come back, son, stay out of my stuff. And, he, and when he went to work, I'd go back in it and he used to fry my hiney. So it's like, this thing, fuck me up. Let's just call it that, all right? Okay, all right. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, but, I mean, for me, it's just never in my wildest dreams that I would think that this thing, because this thing could have missed. Yeah, mm. could have missed. This thing could have missed. Mm. Yo, people weren't really into it in, in the beginning, right? Let me tell you what it was like. There's two ways an inventor does something and he gives it to the public, right? Yeah. <clears throat> it could be, I, I hate that, or what is that? Uh huh. What is that? And the only way I can put a a spin on this is like what Stephen Curry does. He just needs a little bit That's of a great daylight. Spin. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. So for me, yeah. when I was doing this, and this, people would say, my mom's got this record back home and the drum break don't go this long. How you doing this? And they were looking under the the uh, the mat and trying and, and, and going all, like, how are you doing this? Yeah. So when I first introduced this to the parks, People were busy trying to figure out what I was doing, and I went home and I cried for a week. Mm. I cried for a week, Sway, because I'm saying to myself, I got the hardest drum break from pop, rock, jazz, blues, fuck, and, and, and I'm stringing them all behind each other. Mm -hmm. Why aren't this few hundred of people in the park dancing? Why are you guys looking at what it is that I'm doing here? And I got to tell you, my saving grace yeah. was Cowboy. Cowboy to MC. Because he was able to get people to throw hands, this and that. I'm like, right now they're not paying attention to me. Uh -huh. Now I can really go into me. But then the biggest problem after that was DJs was like, all right, you putting your fingertips all over the record and, 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 and putting your putting the crayon on it. Uh -huh. And everybody was like, we're not learning that shit. So my DJ partner had a little brother. Uh -huh. Who was your DJ partner? Mean Gene. Mean Gene. Mm. And Mean Gene had a... a and I, and I tried to teach me, Gene, this technique, but his hands was two times the size of mine. So I'm like, you got to be very gentle with this. But it was this little kid in the living room that what I was doing, circularly, he was able to pick the arm up and drop it down. I'm like, yo, can I teach your little brother? Mm. He says, if I catch my little brother in the room, I'm whipping your ass. Uh -huh. And whenever there was a fight in, like if, if there was a fight and there were 100 people around you go in the middle, it was me and Gene fighting. So he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he, I didn't want to tangle with him. So when he went to work, I'll go visit his girlfriend. I used to grab a milk crate and have him stand on it. And 
asked him to emulate me, and I begged him, please do not tell your big brother. Uh huh. His name was Grand Wizard Theodore. Grand Wizard Theodore, come on, man. Grand Wizard Theodore? Was my first successful student. And wow. I used to tell Theodore, like, you can't, you can't tell your brother, man, otherwise him and I, we're going, we going to be scrapping in the street. And then after a while, I just said, F it. Did a block party up the street at 63 Park. I got on, took the milk crate. I said, Theodore, get on, get on. And that forced people to change the way they were de DJing because uh -huh. if you wasn't going to learn from this teenager, you're going to learn from this little kid. Yeah. Or be embarrassed. Uh-huh. So, <sighs> Cowboy and Grand Wizard were like my, crown my, my, my town criers yeah. uh -huh. of this new system of DJing, and I can remember trying to get a job at clubs, and the word went around that I put my fingertips on the records, and, and the way they treat records back then was very carefully, they had this velvet brush, uh -huh. and they put it into the white paper, and carefully into the album. I said, fuck it, I'm taking two copies and just smashing it into one in, into one jacket, <laughs> and, and, I'm putting, and I'm putting the crayon marks all over it. You was killing that record. I couldn't get a fucking job, I couldn't get a job. So it's been a rough ride. It's been a rough ride, and it always <laughs> Man. Come on. This now, shit was a rough ride, man. Now, when I grew up, we used to hear that Theodore, Grand Wizard Theodore, invented scratching. So, Cutting and scratching. So, Theodore was the first one to see the technique. Okay. And here's how I answer that question. When people ask me who did what and what did who. When you are doing this particular style of DJing, you must know how to move the record back and forth. To get a particular sound, you have to open and close the fader. Mm -hmm. When Jeff does it, Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy and he's Jeff, super salute to him, but big round of applause. Hey, oh you gotta God. applaud that Incredible. man. He makes the songs uh, 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 sing. When Theodore does it, he opens the fader up and rubs the record. Uh huh. Jigga. Right. But the fact of the matter is we're all doing the same thing. So the question is, what did a person invent? The sound of the technique. The technique is mine. Okay. What kind of sound you do to it is yours. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to do this in concert with the vinyl and the fader. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's got people like Q-Bert. Oh, man. This dude is you out know, of here. You, can you tell him where Q-Bert's from? Do you know that? I don't know where he's from. He's he's from the West Coast. Yeah, I know that he's from the Bay Area. Oh my God! Don't feed into that. Don't feed into that. Don't feed into that. And the way he scratches, and the way he cuts, and the way he does things is it's computer generated. But it's a human standing there. Yes. So you know. So for me, it's like everybody has put their own sound and added their own flavor to this technique. And I see people eat. Uh, uh, and do things to it. But at the end of the day, the technique is mine. The sound is not. Grandmaster Flash is here. We walking up the park right now. We just played mm. Super Rap, and that came out in 79. You talked about how Cowboy was your first MC, yeah. and then the MC kind of served as an asset in the party to help keep the party going. Sure. Eventually, because of this technique you created, and then the sampler came out, the music business got a hold of it, something they thought wasn't going to be profitable or last a long period of time. Mm. They wanted to invest low to get a high, a, a high ROI. I remember when Wild Style came out, that was in 83. Three. Wild Style came out in 83. Um, uh, Rapper's Delight came out in... 79. 79. Yes, 79. You signed your deal in 80 yeah. to Sugar Hill Records, right? Yeah, right. Okay, and so now the music business for hip-hop begins, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> How did the music business change, uh, impact the culture, in your opinion, from where you sit? I think... We were very young. Mm -hmm. So put it this way. Before signing the contracts, big fish, small pond, yes. streets. Uh -huh. yep. Small business. Signed the contract. Small fish. Big, 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 big pond. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I used to play this club called Disco Fever. Disco Fever. Get that round. He just said mm. he just dropped the iconic club like mm. it was nothing. Every Tuesday, yeah, and it was this woman that used to come to my nights on Terrible Tuesdays, is what it was called, and she would sit near the bar and have all these jewels on, looking like money, and everybody. <laughs> pss, pss, pss. That's the one that uh, Sugar Hill Gang gets signed to. And I'm wondering why is it she's coming to my club every Tuesday? Eventually, she's, she asks Sal to escort her son to the DJ booth to holler at me. And Joey Robinson Jr. says, uh, my moms would like to have a meeting with you guys. I'm like, okay. Meeting one, I says, well, we're signed to Enjoy Records, because we're <laughs> super <laughs> rapid. Uh -huh. And she looks at me and she says, we'll take care of that. Mm. I'm like, okay, I'm new to the music business. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to take care mm -hmm. of that. How, how does what that, does that, that mean? work? Like, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> so, you know, me and Raheem was the ones that went, you know, went, went out to Jersey. Mm -hmm. We got on the bus and, and went to Jersey, you know? And when you get this piece of paper, Raheem looks at it, I look at it, it's like, oh, we need to give this to somebody. Uh -huh. I'm going to take mine to my sister. And Raheem said, you're going to take it to his mother. <laughs> and for some reason, they kept pushing us, like, listen, to sign. we can make you got stars like Sugar Hill Gang. And, you know, and then from there, they're pushing and pushing and pushing. And I got to tell you, I don't want to go too much deeper into this, but I got to tell you, when I signed Joseph Sadler, I got this... painful feeling mm. in my body like something's wrong here. Mm. Something's wrong. I looked at Raheem, met with the boys. Someone like, let's move forward. Look at what Sugar Hill Gang is doing. And some of us is like, wait a minute, we need to take this to somebody that can analyze this for us because we didn't know what this was. After a while, it was like, Listen, we got to move forward with this. We move forward with that. Then we made freedom. Mm -hmm. It's nasty. All those. White lines. And white lines, mm -hmm. you know. And then, you know, after a while, it was, uh, we was wondering why paperwork, why, why, why we didn't receive this and why we didn't receive that. And I think probably. What do you mean, like residuals? Okay, so let me explain. I, I'll, I'll just say this. When I went, when I was on tour, there was a gentleman that said to me, Dag, your publishing must be incredible. Mm. I'm looking at him like, I learned being a geek that I am, but publishing is a book, yeah. right? So when he said that, when we came off tour, and we went to go have our annual meeting with Sylvia, I said, Sylvia, what's publishing? And I never seen a fair skinned woman turn so red. Really? <laughs> then after that, I started getting kicked out of the meetings. They were doing meetings without me. Wow. Okay. But the woman at the front desk who was hitting on me, trying to get with me, was telling me why you calling me like why you ain't out here. I'm mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? There's a meeting out here. And after that, it just got messier and messier and messier and messier and messier and. So the that's history. That's where the breakup happened because of that. Yeah, that that happened because three stayed and three left. Okay. Three stayed and three left. And then uh -huh. eventually what it was, when I left and Raheem and Creole came with me, uh -huh. I met a person by the name of Bob Krasnow from Electra. Uh -huh. Paperwork straight, publishing, advance, whole nine yards. And Bob Krasnow says, if you could get the other three to come, we'll work with all of y'all. So we started speaking again. Mm -hmm. I said, as a matter of fact, I can get you guys this, that, that, this, and that. We attempted to try to do it again, two albums on a lecture, but the, the magic was already gone. It's all tainted. You know, so it was yeah. pretty much, she had already put the poison in them already. Mm -hmm. But now, today, we're good friends. Me and Mel, we You hug. and Melly Mel cool? Yeah, we cool. Oh, good my God. God. Man, that's man. dope. Yeah. That's, that's dope. Yeah. We can end the interview right here, man. <laughs> yeah, me and Mel is cool. Oh, my yeah. God, Yo, Yeah, you know, you know and, and, and let me tell you how it was. Like, we was at the Grammys, and we was in a, I was in a waiting area 
waiting for the, the, the main door to open for all of us to sit down and start the processions. And I see Mel. So I walked up to him, walked up to him and I says, listen, listen, man. What happened back then? I cried over it, died over it, and I'm good now. Mm. And I love you. And little, I can almost see like you know the the, the tears in his eyes almost. Yeah. yeah. Like he been wanting t- wanting this forever and ever. So while we were at the Grammys, we was kicking it, laughing and joking, and uh-huh. all just there. We yeah. good. Yeah, I went over old times too. Yeah, the we went over ones. old times, and you know, and, yeah. he, and he talked about. That side, I talked about this side, and we, we, we understand, you know, that things happen. You know, we were uh, kids from the ghetto with mm-hmm. nothing, you know, so I don't have no issue with Mel anymore. Everything's good. Amen. Everything's good with Melly Mel and Grandmaster wow. Flash. We're yeah. about to see some concerts and wow. everything. I don't know. We'll see about that. We'll okay, see. well, that's what good mean, Flash. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love the boys, man. It's all good, man. It's all good. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Right now, I just got to clear up the fact that the DJ and the producer matter in this art form. If we were not here, we would not have the human being known as the speaker, as the (laughs) MC or the rapper. They would not be here. You gonna demonstrate some stuff for us? Yeah, I wanna do that, man. Yes. We gonna do that next. Eight 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 seven four two three three four.